In this video, we're walking through key components you'll need to build an effective dashboard in your Bubble app. If you're serious about building an important home base of information for your users, you need to understand what custom requirements your dashboard's going to need. We're actually gonna open up a Bubble editor and build out some example pieces in real time. But first, let me walk you through some example wireframe designs so we can set the stage for what we're talking about. I have several different wireframes pulled open here from dribble.com. This is a great inspiration site uh, for different UX designs. And I want to click through a few of them so you can first kind of pick up on the trends and patterns that all of these dashboard designs share. This is going to speak to things that your users are going to expect, things that will feel familiar for them so that they're not having to uh, figure out how to read information from a dashboard. So this first one is a, a sample dashboard for transactions. You can see that a collapsed menu is on the left hand side here. We have a couple of uh, graphs and charts to visualize transaction data, some key metrics to help the user get kind of big picture insights into their transaction information. We have a table down below to see a list of top customers over on the right, uh, another table of expenses highlighting top products. Okay, so let's switch over to another dashboard. Now, right out of the gate, we're seeing some similarities here. The menu is also on the left. We also have some visualizations. We have tables with key information and also key insights that are being highlighted, right? And the layout overall of this dashboard is such that it's making it easy for the user to grab quick pieces of information so that they can make important decisions. And uh, similarities between these two particular designs is that we've kind of got like a three panel system going. The menu on the left, the primary piece of information in the middle, and then some secondary information on the right. We've got the same thing here, this kind of trifold design. This next example is for a task management, you know, the dashboard for uh, working within projects or tasks. Again, very similar layout overall. The menu is on the left. We've got this three column structure here. And note that obviously every single application is going to be working with different type of data. So which data points you highlight is completely up to uh, you know, the purpose of your app and what's going to be the most effective and valuable for your users. Mobile applications, of course, still have dashboards uh, for many apps as well. Now, you have to keep in mind that obviously you have less room to display as much information. And one of the things that we'll be talking about uh, when, you know, with key components here for dashboards is you certainly don't want to overwhelm the user with information. You know, a dashboard is where a lot of info can come together in one place, but you certainly don't need to display everything all at once. Now, this next mobile example is uh, for an application. Let me scroll down here to uh, this view here, an application that's going to help users keep track of their tasks and the work that they're doing. This one's a little bit simpler. There's not as much information showing on the screen and that's okay. Just because you have the space to fill doesn't necessarily mean you need to fill it. Uh, you know, you only want to surface insights that are actually going to be helpful for the user. So in this screen, we're seeing how many hours they've worked and how much they've earned uh, from the weekly perspective. Notice that the user can change this perspective to a different time frame, right? We're not showing them the week summary, the month summary, the day summary all at once. So one of the first steps you need to take before approaching your dashboard is to make decisions on what's actually going to live on that dashboard. What are the most important data points that you want to surface? for them. And this is before you think about any visualization presentation, right? What charts you're going to use, the colors, the sizing of everything. What is the information that the user needs to get out of it? Think about what's going to be the most valuable for users, what decisions you want to help them make as soon as they get to this dashboard. This is typically the first screen they see when they first log into the app. Now we can start to look at how we're going to lay things out in the page design. You can see that I have a bubble editor open here. I've got a blank page to work with, and I'm going to be following this transaction dashboard design to pull some inspiration um, so I can organize my page here. So what I'm going to start with is breaking things up into a similar three column structure. The first thing I'm going to do is change my pages container layout setting to row. This way, any uh, primary container that I add to the screen is going to stack horizontally. So I'm going to do that first. I'm going to add my first group here. I'm going to rename this to group left. Okay, and let's change the sizing a little bit. I'm going to have this vertically stretch, and I'm also going to change the width of this. I'm going to have this max out at 20% of the entire page. I'm going to remove this setting here. There we go. So this is my first group. I'm going to copy this two more times so that I can have my two other columns. Paste and paste. Let's rename these really quick. Group center 
and this will be group right this way it can always keep track of everything now the group center I'm going to give this a bit more room in terms of width because this is where primary information is going to go so I'm going to set that to 60% max width so now I have very even uh, kind of containers serving as the foundation of my page right this left side is going to serve as my menu I can change the color of this if I want to kind of match some of those example designs that we saw earlier for example changing the background to this darker blue this center area will be broken down into subsections and then we have this right area for maybe some secondary information okay so going back into the example you can see that the center area is actually broken down into essentially a grid of multiple rows and columns and that's kind of the next step I want to take here to break things down into these subsections so back into our example I'm going to add the containers that I need first to set up these different sections note that I'm not worried about any of the actual data that's populating yet I'm just laying down the foundation so that everything has a very specific place to live okay so I'm going to add another group here um, to start me off and I'm going to rename this to group header and I'm going to generally set up the sizing they are going to be different heights because of the the content being different um, but let's remove the fit width to content and I'm going to set the minimum height for now at least to 100 pixels in height okay so now I can easily copy and paste this a few more times to create my four rows. Now I just got to come in here and rename this. Now, as these groups fill with content, the heights will change a little bit. Uh, what I'm going to do for now is just change my alignment style of the center group to spread things out evenly, to distribute them evenly with this setting here. Uh, this way I can get a better sense of how things are going to be placed on the page. All right, now I've gone ahead and created a few more subgroups within uh, the center groups here just to create a little bit more uh, kind of left and right separation uh, you know as we can see here in the example for example this header is sort of broken up into two subsections we have the title on the left user information on the right same thing for our charts area we have two distinct uh, columns here one for chart one one for chart two so I've added those in I've also increased the height of the charts group so that it takes up a little bit more room now if you start to feel like you're losing yourself in all of these groups right it's hard to see uh, where everything thing is where things begin and end one tip I can give you is to uh, color code them create background colors for your groups temporarily while you're building them so that you can tell them apart for example in the header group up here I'm going to give this a background style um, of just let's say a light blue here just like this okay Right, so now I can actually see where the, the start and the end of all the groups are, especially as my dimensions change uh, over time and I don't uh, create any conflicts or accidentally put something where it's not supposed to be and end up you know, delaying my, my development here. Hey, real quick, if you're enjoying this, take a look at our free extended workshop over at coachingnocodeapps.com slash workshop, where we'll guide you through our four phased approach to take you from idea to app. If you're looking for a complete start to finish guide, you're going to enjoy this workshop. The link is on the screen and in the description below. All right, now the next thing that we're going to add here are our section titles. This is gonna help your users stay oriented. If we look at our example designs here again, notice that all the section titles are designed uh, consistently. They're the same size, the same font style, the same color. This is gonna uh, be easy for the user to spot and learn that, okay, this is an important label for the section that we're looking at. You can see total projected, data activity, top customers, top products and expenses. They're all styled in the same way. And again, it helps the user very quickly understand what it is that they're looking at so that they can stay oriented. The transactions title at the top looks to me to be a little bit bigger just because it's a title more for the screen. Um, let's go over to the second example. We have a very similar situation. You see that the kind of welcome message for the screen is a little bit bigger, a little bit more bold, uh, but performance, current tasks are styled the same. Those are serving as clear section labels. And then over on the right, we have activity, which is a bit more subtle. You know, the, the section on the right is, is more secondary to this, the information in the center. And then our other example here, very similar situation, activity, my schedule, task board, right? These are consistently designed labels um, so that, you know, we're not overwhelming the user with too many different fonts and sizes uh, so that they understand they're kind of at the same level of importance. So in my editor, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a text to my first group here. This is my group title, and I'm going to change this over to a different style that's been pre-configured. Um, we're going to go to this heading two dark, and I will enter in my text uh, transactions like this. And now I'm actually just going to copy this text here 
and paste it into my two different chart groups as well as my customers. We're going to put it into all of these here. And now it's just a matter of changing the content itself. Okay, I've just edited all of those texts and now we can actually start to see some life coming to this page in terms of organization. Okay, one more thing that I'm gonna do here at the group level is add a little bit of padding. You can see how the text is hugging the very edges of the uh, upper uh, border and also the left border here, this upper left corner. Um, I wanna give it a little bit more breathing room. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna go to the style that all of these groups are pulling from, this default group style. I'm gonna edit this style. I'm gonna go over to the layout tab within the style itself and add padding. This way it can be applied across all of the groups all at once and I don't need to make this change uh, multiple times. So I'm gonna add, uh, let's say, let's say 20 pixels of padding all the way around. Oops, not 200, let's do 20 just like that. Okay, jumping back into my design and you can see the 20 pixels of padding has been added to all of my groups. Now they're not uh, touching the borders, they've been pushed down and in uh, just a little bit. You can see that shading, there is bubble showing me the padding for that group. If I click into this group, we can still see that same shading, right? So now it's a little bit more comfortable to read. Now notice that Every single one of these groups also has a border and that's because of the style applied to this group. This is probably something that I would remove. Um, I feel like there's probably way too many lines happening on the screen. If I remove the border, just set this to none, go back to the design. You can see now it's been cleaned up a little bit. You know, really the, uh, the, the color differentiation between the groups and the background color can help create that separation. Yes, of course you can have lines. I might just do it on the outer groups, um, not all of these inner ones. If we go over to these uh, sample designs, you see that you know they're very particular about where the lines are going to be. We have some borders here, but we don't necessarily have borders around every single section. Um, you can see that the right-hand section is sort of separated from the center with this slight different background color, right? We can do that in ours as well. If we go over to the right-hand side, change the background style to kind of off-white, a little bit more gray uh, to create that separation right there. If we look at our, our another example here, you can see that there's a few more horizontal lines to separate things. Notice that they didn't change any background colors for any of the columns, rather they're using lines. Uh, right borders to separate those different sections. It's not all just you know floating in space like that. The third example here uh, has a bit more of a card-like design based on this outer background color being a gray and then the inner subsections having that white and so that kind of offsets them from that background. So you can see there's lots of different ways to create that separation. At that point it's more of a creative choice. It's kind of up to uh, how you want things to look. So as you're putting together the layout for this dashboard page, your focus should be on user orientation. It should be really easy to understand where everything is. Typically users will scan the page from top to bottom, left to right. So the most important information should be at the top of the screen, right? Less important information at the bottom. And you can also create good orientation here with clear separation of your sections and clear labels of every section. Take advantage of your styles, right? That's gonna actually help you move through the designing part, the appearance properties more quickly. It'll also help you take advantage of some performance benefits that happen behind the scenes when you use styles uh, more consistently throughout your design. Also, try not to get distracted by features that aren't actually going to solve problems for your users or get you any closer to launching your application sooner. You know, things like fancy animations to transition between screens um, or implementing a dark mode option. You know, these are all nice to have. They can certainly create a certain tone for your application, but at the early stages of your application, when you're just getting started building these out, you wanna focus on setting up the fundamentals, creating a really strong base, and move on to the very next priority, right? Once you have these layouts in place, you can start to populate them with your data. That way you can get right to testing it, making sure all of your logic uh, is working properly, and be able to launch a lot sooner. All right, so here you can see we've moved this page further along. We've added a few more containers to our design. Uh, we've removed those background colors uh, this way we could add more text and subtitles, some more icons. Um, some of our texts here are serving as placeholders for what will eventually hold dynamic information, such as the date and time, the user's information, things like that. You can also see that we've filled in our menu a little bit. We've added some buttons here. We've narrowed the menu just a bit more uh, to uh, further prioritize this center section. We've been basically working with the same types of elements we have been to this point. What I want to talk about next is 
Uh, a couple of specialty elements that you'll typically find in a dashboard to best visualize information for your users. And these are charts and graphs as well as tables. So if we look at some of our uh, example designs here, you can see you know, charts and graphs are a fantastic way of communicating important insights for users in a way that would be harder to see in you know, just a straight list of text, for example. This way you can group things across dates, um, you can really differentiate, you know, high points, low points, trends lines, compare different series of data, things like that. Um, in our other example here, we have another chart, very similar. You can see this one's interactive. When you hover over it, you see a little tool tip there. Um, another example here, there's also some uh, bar charts to demonstrate the activity time, things like that. And then our other special type of element that we'll usually see on dashboards are tables. You can see here top customers, expenses, these tables are a great way to present a list of information in a really structured way, you know, just like a, you might find in a spreadsheet. Here in this example, we have the same type of thing here for the tasks. So jumping into the editor here, uh, let's start with the charts and graphs. In order to add a chart or graph to your page design, you're going to have to install a plugin. So if you go over to the plugin section of your editor and open up the plugin search, just type in the word chart and you'll find a bunch of different options to choose from. Some are free, some are paid. Um, you should definitely do your homework uh, and, and explore, go into the documentation, the detail pages of, of these things so that you can find exactly what's going to serve your app the best. Now, I will make a couple of suggestions, some uh, charts that we've uh, seen work very well with our own clients in the past. The first one is this chart element right here, which is published by Bubble. This is a free plugin, and it's great for really simple chart needs where you only need to work with one series of data um, and don't need to have a lot of fancy kind of interaction or design with it. Again, very simple needs. So I'm gonna add this to the design so you can see quickly here what this would look like. Let me change the uh, height on this, change it to something a little bit taller, remove the width. And let's say that this was a bar chart. You see that there's a few different that you can choose from. Notice that the appearance properties for this have really changed compared to the text and the groups. And that's because this property editor is very context sensitive. It's going to offer you settings that are specific to that type of visual element. And for charts and graphs, you know, you're really working with uh, the, mostly the data source. Uh, you know, what data is going to populate the chart, if you need to group it by dates or by numerical buckets. You know, some of the premium plugins have many more settings around their charts so that you can really have full control uh, over the visualization of it. But here we're working with a simple one. This works with one series. You can change the colors, you know, around the bars and the borders and all of that. Um, but again, the heart of this is really gonna be around the data source. Now, if you're looking to do more sophisticated visualizations, I do encourage you to check out a couple of these premium ones here. This is a, a demo page for a premium plugin called Chart.js. Um, just kind of scrolling through the example page here, you can see you know many different types of charts that you can work with. A lot of them are very interactive. You know you can create custom tool tips. Some of them can even help you trigger workflows. So if I click on you know these different data points, they're uh, changing you know these designs up here. So we're kind of passing information around different visual elements in the design. All right, this is one here. Here's another one, very similar, uh, similarly set up for their demonstration page. Uh, but they have you know, another set of different types of, of charting uh, elements here. So you do have a lot more flexibility with these more premium ones, many more different types of charts. But again, go with whatever is going to make the most sense for your app. And again, I highly recommend you look through their documentation pages so you understand how they work. But that's the first type of special element that you'll typically find on a dashboard. Now, the other type of element are the tables. Now, in Bubble, there's a couple ways that you can actually create a table. You can do so with the repeating group or with, you know, aptly named the table element. Uh, the table element is currently, as of this recording, um, in beta. We find it stable enough to be using in real apps now, so I do encourage you to take a look at this. The table element is more specific to you know, traditional spreadsheet type of tables. You can, of course, achieve the same design with the repeating group. Repeating group's a little bit more flexible in terms of working with lists. It doesn't have to be a traditional um, you know, uh, uh, row table like this with certain columns that you design. Uh, repeating groups can actually help you with designs such as, let's switch over to this one right here, something like this, right? I would also use a repeating group for this. Um, not as much of a spreadsheet type of thing, but 
the, at the end of the day, the repeating group is just about working with a dynamic list. Uh, it's going to pull from your data source and it's going to generate as many rows and columns as it needs to. Table element is more pre-configured for more traditional spreadsheet type of design. So I'll show you the difference here. We're going to add this repeating group. Let's open up the width just so we can see, right? It's basically just a, a plane to start, a plane uh, repeating element, and it's up to you to configure the data source. Again, just like with the charts and graphs, um, you have control over how many rows, how many columns, you know, you have a lot of dynamic settings here. You can change the sizes of everything. And once you have the repeating group, configured in terms of its data source, you know, you can start to populate it with the content inside and it will repeat for you. So if I just type in the word status for now, you can see how it duplicates. Um, but in, in theory, you're going to have dynamic expressions here so that every row's information is actually different, right? Row one is top customer one, row two is top customer two, for example. Okay. Now the table element, you'll see the difference here. I'm going to add this to this group as well. You can see how immediately there's a lot of pre-configured components here for us that acts more like a traditional spreadsheet table. Um, you can of course customize the dimensions just like everything. So if I remove the width here, I can make that wider. I can add more columns, right? I can insert um, another column there as well as rows. You can have your tables be formatted in a vertical manner or a horizontal manner. These come actually pre-built with um, headers, sticky headers that you can add in. Not that you can't do that with the repeating group, but it is up to you to design that in the repeating group. So there's pros and cons. Again, I encourage you to just explore them, but those are the two types of elements in Bubble that you'll want to work with uh, to display dynamic lists of information, right? A list of data where you don't know ahead of time uh, how many items they're going to be in that table or what the individual items are. Okay. So be very, very mindful of the kind of data that you're working with, because that is going to dictate the type of visual element that you're going to add to your page. All right. So now that I have a few more visual elements in place in my wireframe here, now I can actually start to connect these visual elements to my dynamic data that is in my database and actually bring this to life a bit more. So going over to the data section of the editor, I am going to be working with a few different data types. We're going to work with the user type. This is the person who's logged into the app, the transaction type and the customer type for transactions and customers. Those are the data points that I'm going to be reporting on, you know, and aggregating uh, in my visualizations and in my tables. Under my app data tab here, I can see I have a few different sample records for customers, transactions. Some of these transactions are expenses. Some of them are revenue. Um, and I'm going to be logged in as Monica here, who has a name and a title for us to display. So in order to uh, display everything in these elements, I need to create dynamic expressions. Really simple one here, date and time. Instead of having this, you know, placeholder text, I'm going to insert dynamic data. Bubble actually has this as a pre-configured data source available for us. So I'm going to say current date and time. We'll just leave it as is. We can format it a few different ways uh, here. We can have lots of different ways of displaying the date and or the time just like that. But I'm going to take it back to its default here. Um, over on the right hand side, I'm going to populate this with information about the user. So instead of the word name, I'm going to insert the current user's name instead, right? Whoever's logged in, that's the name that will display. And over here, we'll display the current user's title. So this is completely dynamic here. Let's reduce, let's take down our spacing just a little bit so everything can stay on one line there. There we go. All right, so let's just preview that, just those first two adjustments. I'm gonna refresh my page here. You can see this is now the front end preview of my design. I can see a very specific date and time here, and also here's Monica's name, here's Monica's title. If I were to run this page as someone else, let's uh, go as Ross here. Let me just give Ross a quick title. Let's say um, owner and Ross is his name. Okay, and so I will reload this page now logged in as Ross, gonna have this refresh there. You can see now Ross is the name that displays an owner. Okay, so this is pulling specifically uh, from my database according to the instruction that I'm giving Bubble through my dynamic expressions. So let's do a, a few more here. Let's uh, replace this text here for the income. Um, I'm going to say, I'm just going to type in the plus symbol so we know that it's income. And I, here I'm going to search for my transaction records in my database. I'm searching for transactions, specifically the transactions where the type equals revenue. 
And from that list of transactions, I'm going to go to the amount field and I'm going to perform an aggregation. I'm going to sum them all up and I'm going to format this as a currency. So it's clear to the user that we're talking about money. Let's do two decimal places, a thousand separator for uh, with a comma and we'll have the dollar symbol there. I'm also gonna create a canvas placeholder um, that says income. This is just so that uh, Bubble doesn't display that full expression in my design canvas and make it a little bit harder for me to see everything. So what I can do from here is just create a copy of this expression and come over to the expenses side of things. And I'm gonna remove that placeholder number and then just paste in the expression and just switch out the type. Now I just want to show transactions that are labeled as expense. And I'm also going to give this um, a placeholder as well, just like that. I'm going to leave the total balance alone for now. Um, let's also come down into the chart so that you can see a little bit about how we configure our charts here. Again, this is with the simple chart element uh, or chart plugin by Bubble. So I'm going to change the type of data here to transaction. Here we're going to do a search for transactions. I'm also going to filter this so that it's only my, um, my revenue. So type equals revenue here. And I'm going to run a special bubble operation that's going to help me group my transactions by the date, um, specifically by the month. All right, so I've defined some starting and ending dates for my chart going to add an aggregation so that bubble can sum the amounts per month. So if there are multiple transactions in the same month, bubble will add it all up for me. So the value is going to be that sum. The label is going to be the date. Um, let's just have this display the month and the year. Again, you see how much customization I'm able to do, um, you know, just within one element here. And this is, you know, this is the simple uh, chart element. Uh, let's see here. I think that's everything I want to configure there. So let's take a quick look. Let's preview the app here uh, with now these numbers in place for income, expenses. You can see my uh, transactions here. So most of my transactions were in January. I had one transaction here in April. I believe there's one at that particular amount there. And for the rest of the month, there was no activity. And so that's why we don't get anything displayed there. Okay. But the, the key here is that we're working with dynamic expressions to pull information, sometimes manipulated, um, to be able to visualize this within the dashboard exactly how we want. Let's do something similar here with our customers. Now we're using the table element here. So I'm going to set the type of content to customer. I'm also going to search for my customers just like this. And inside, let's add a text. I'm going to grab this text from here. And here we can actually populate the individual cells with the current rows, customers ID, right? Just like that. And for the spending, I'm actually going to do a calculation that's unique to the customer. So here I'm going to search for transactions where the customer equals the current rows customer. So it's only transactions for that person. And here I can take the amount and do a sum. I can of course format everything as currency as well. Um, so you can see here, you know, within every individual block, I can highly customize what I want to display. I mean, I haven't even touched any appearance properties. You know, you can add other things like icons. You can change the colors. We can have conditional statements here. This is all highly dynamic now pulling from our database and we can manipulate things if we need, if it makes sense to uh, for the dashboard. Right now, I haven't centered anything, but I can absolutely move things around a little bit. But just to show you, right, I have my my three customer records. It's displaying information differently per person now, um, and it's also doing a calculation for me. Um, so that if you know a customer spent had more than one transaction, it will add it all up for me, so I can see their total spend. All right, this is just the beginning when it comes to designing a dashboard feature in your Bubble app. Remember, every single app is different. What we've gone over today covers the key components you need no matter what to get started. You wanna make sure that you're working with the right type of data for your dashboard. You wanna make sure that you're working with the right visual elements for that data, charts versus text versus tables. You wanna make sure that you're laying things out uh, and styling things in a way that's consistent and really easy to understand for the user. Again, this is typically kind of the home base for your user users are the first place they land when they sign up or every time they log in to the application. 
Once you have these key components in place, you can connect them to your dynamic data sources and really bring it to life. From there, you can customize further for whatever is more specific to your application. You know, some apps use their dashboard as a notification center. This may be where you surface, you know, tasks that are upcoming, that are due, or maybe have expired to really prompt the user to take a certain action, for example. So take it one step at a time. You don't want to build uh, everything all at once. That's going to be hard to navigate and definitely focus on the things that are actually going to serve your users the most, that are going to solve problems for them. Right. Everything again should have a purpose when you build it into this screen. All right. I hope this was helpful. And if it was the content you're about to see on the next screen will help you take things even further.